1980? 1980. And how did that begin, and what was the essence of that interaction? Okay. Um, it really all evolved around the Palladians themselves. Uh, Earth has been the subject of discussion for a long time. What really, the real attention and focus really started um, uh, when we started uh, detonating our first nuclear weapons. We did, as a race. Uh, nuclear weapons had been used here in our ancient past hundreds of thousands of years ago because uh, there have been wars here between a lot of different factions, predominantly most of them human. Um, the Pleiadians had agreed or offered to come back here and try to help raise the consciousness of the planet. Well, apparently what happened was that when they got here, uh, they were really faced with their past. Uh, the Pleiadians had had incredible civil wars amongst themselves and others, other wars. Um, and they had just moved into a fourth and fifth density consciousness. And they didn't want to come back here and take the warrior space again. And because of the Greys in involvement, or involvement here, and the Orions, and a small group from Sirius B, and the Orion group, and a group from, Rig from Rigel that are here as well, <coughs> and others, they didn't want to come back here and have to move into warrior space. So they started dragging their feet. In other words, they didn't do as much as they needed to do. Well, as this is occurring, you know, changes in our, in our galaxy are also occurring, and they're moving at a much faster rate. So the Andromedans finally said, well, what is happening? What have you accomplished? And the Pleiadians basically said, you know, we're having our own conflicts dealing with this because the Pleiadians themselves have a tremendous amount of karma with, with our solar system, you know, with Mars and, and, and Earth. They simply just weren't as motivated as they should be or could have been to start making the changes here. They also had made some communications with the Earth governments that didn't go very well at all. So basically, they said, well, we don't know what to do. So the Andromedans themselves said, okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. We'll, we'll take this because it is important for the whole. We'll make an effort. Now, the Andromedans were probably the better choice because they don't have any karmic ties to us. So they're, they're completely um, neutral and they're probably better observers as well because of their neutrality. So they've basically been taking over. And what they did was they got involved in 1980. Uh, they're working with the Pleiadians, with the Syrians. Um, uh, they have... Uh, Which group of Syrians? Uh, from Sirius A. Sirius A. Um, so what they're doing here now is they're trying to raise the consciousness. They came back in time to 1964 to contact me. I'm not the only one. There are others. There are also other people who are, who are mediums or, or channels or whatever word you want to add to it, um, who are also getting information on a spiritual level. Octarians are also involved. And the whole point is, is they want our part of the galaxy to evolve. And what's holding it back is our solar system. And what's holding back our solar system is the consciousness of humanity on the Earth. The Earth herself, as an entity, spiritual entity, wants to move into, into fourth and fifth density. No, everybody on the Earth is from someplace else. None of us were born and hatched here. None of us as souls were created here. We've all come, we all come from another time and place. My understanding is that all of the conscious spirit that's in this universe came through different black holes from other universes in time and space, which we simply aren't privy to. Um, so we've, we've, we're, we're ancient. There's no age to us. We, we weren't created with the universe. We came through another universe, through the black holes, um, to this place that we now call our universe to continue to evolve. That's everyone, virtually everyone. Uh, you know, that contact at age 14, was that contact um, time travel in any way by the Andromedans to prepare you psychologically for your future contacts? Yes, they were all, they all, all, all the contacts is where they had to come back because they, they came here in 1980. All right. So they had to go back in time. And that's what they're, they've done with, with a lot of people. Uh, um, even the Pleiadians, to some degree, I understand, have done that, where they go back and they start preparing people early for 
for uh, responsibilities that they will have in the future, as opposed to hitting them all at once and saying, here you go, you know, just dumping it on your lap and you're saying, oh my God, what is this, you know, my whole reality. So there are increments of preparation that have occurred and continue to occur. And, and um, this is occurring with humanity on a whole in, in, in similar fashion, um, where information is being disseminated and little bits and pieces of ground roots people are starting to come together and really sensing change. And they're, they're, they're slowly but surely being brought to a level that when the real truth hits them, they'll be able to experience it, handle it, and, and um, assimilate it. Uh, for our good. Um, do they ever talk amongst themselves in a language you don't understand? Uh, they, don't, they, they do, and, and it's not really a language. Um, or an they're telepathic, and, and yes, they, they, they'll, they'll stand in circles when they're talking, and, and when, when they do talk, um, flashes of light where their third eye is, right here, different flashes of colors, colors that we don't even have on our, our third density spectrum just appear and, and they're just boom, 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 flashing all this color. And it's like instantaneous sentences are being just communicated. And there's some, sometimes there's nodding, sometimes there's uh, nodding this way, or sometimes up and down. Sometimes, you know, there's gestures, but all the time there's just flashes. And their flashes is their, is their language. Um, it's rare that I've been privy to what it is because they happen so fast. I couldn't assimilate. So there are and some then, universal gestures then. Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All human beings are, are very animated. Do yes, they, they, they smile. They also frown, and they also look very sad when, when something is, is distressing them. That there is now an uplifting of energy in our universe that's occurring, and the two positives, fear and love, are just banging themselves at each other. And, and the intensity is growing. It's growing every single moment. So as and we're just a microcosm of that. Yeah, as you're disseminating all this information to us, we should look at all this information in the spirit of love so we don't feed any, any energy into the spirit of fear. Love is the answer. That's the bottom line. Love is the answer. Love does conquer all. Love does move mountains. It can make the shifts in consciousness, but it starts, number one, with ourselves. You know? So That's even all this is going on around us, we just need to remember to focus on love and... Love of self and, 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 and love of, of earth, love of, of, of race. That's right. And that is, and this is something that, that the Andromedans have really stressed. There is no race any better than us. Just because they're different, just because they're more evolved, doesn't mean that they're better. We are equal. We're just not maybe as aware as they are. But that doesn't mean that any race is any better or any less. In fact, we're all equal. So we should just not worship anybody. Hell, no, absolutely not. That's how we got into this mess in the first place. Right. Um, that, 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 absolutely, if you want to worship somebody, worship the God within you. That's it. Worship no one else. And if you're going to have a tyrant in your life, let it be that part of you that's critical of you. Let that be your only tyrant. Don't give anybody else any power outside of your physical form to be a tyrant, to control you, or manipulate you in any way. Be yourself. Because if you are yourself, you're a part of God, and that part of you knows what to do. It knows the right way to live. And, you know, and this is really interesting. Because of our genetic makeup, of the 22 different races, and, and all of the DNA and the racial memories that we have and the genetics that we have, because of the fact that we are spirit, do you know, and this is an incredible thing, do you know that the Andromedans actually consider us royalty? They consider us royalty. We obviously aren't acting like royalty, but we're the only ones in our galaxy that can make the claim to having the genetics that we have and the possibilities and the capabilities of doing what we can do as a race. We're the only ones. They actually consider every single one of us with any sense of power, with, with any knowledge, comes responsibility. That's exactly right. And the divine plan is one of freedom, free expression. Free expression, free expression, free expression. It is not one where they want to implant us and they say, you are going to be a worker, you're going to be this, you're going to be that. Sorry, that's not what it's all about. And if anybody tries to force that stuff down your throat, 
fight it. But you know what? Feed your mind. Feed your mind with, with, with spirit, with questions about existence, about what it is we're doing here, why we're here, what the hell is really going on, why is it that I have all these material things and I'm still miserable? What is the ultimate agenda then of the Alpha Draconians in relation to Earth and to this part of the galaxy? They, they do not want our galaxy to move into fourth and fifth density uh, consciousness because they lose complete power. But it will anyway, won't it? Not necessarily. There are no guarantees. There are no guarantees. Uh, there's no guarantee that Earth is going to go into fourth or fifth density. There's no guarantees that the entire galaxy is going to get there. Because if that were the case, they would probably just leave us alone and not give a damn what was happening here. No. You see, the, the Draconans are third density. They're physical just like us. They can only move into fourth density by mechanical means. If we move into fourth and fifth density, they've lost their playground. They've lost control of what they want to control. So they're fighting like hell trying to hold everything back. Because if they can hold everything back, then again, it's a, it's a form of power, of control. Now, how it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, got, it's such a mess. Alex, how do the Andromedans plan to remove the Alpha Draconians? And you said they're the bullies who are the strongest. They, uh, can, can they not be removed? Apparently, apparently, the universe has created its own way of doing that, and maybe this is a good place to end. In the beginning, uh, and here's, here's the history of our universe, where it was created. The Big Bang Theory is essentially right in its simplicity. But apparently what happened was... Um, as, as vibrations, as the universe starts to excel in light this way, there are pockets, and you have to look at it as, as a holograph, holographic projection of light. When you put a shadow into a light, it creates a, a variance of the light. Well, apparently what happens is, is things that don't um, ascend or choose to take higher consciousness, they get very, very heavy in weight or in light, whatever you want to call it. And as everything starts to exceed up, bulges, dips in light are created, in frequency are created. And what happens is negativity forms, because of its weight, its heaviness, forms into these pockets. Well, what happens is they form a sack. And eventually what happens is that those sacks break. And because everything is spirit and nothing is ever wasted, they form, when they explode, they they cast themselves out and they form another universe. They create a space for them to continue. Well, that's how our black holes are. That's how they were formed. Those black holes, if we could get through them, would be to another universe. They're portals. And it would just explode out. Well, that's how our universe was created. Well, because of this new energy that's being, um, that's being formed, pockets are, of resistance are now being formed all through, the, all through the universe. And in our galaxy, it's, it's right now between us and Cirrus. So the way that the Andromedans plan to remove the Alpha Draconians would be? Is basically to try to contain them and, and the en their own energy themselves will suck them into a place of darkness so they can move out into another place. The Greys, the Orion groups, this is going to happen. It's happened before. Um, they know it's happening now. And this is why everybody feels this intense energy. Things are suddenly really starting to increase and in, in, it's simply because it is increasing. What is the primary message of the Andromedans? Grow up now. Open your eyes. Open your ears. Take responsibility for your life. Take responsibility for your planet and realize this is your home. This is your race and that if you if you are sincere in making the effort to evolve, they will meet us halfway. But they're not going to come in here and do all the work for us.